In this video, I'll explain the role of the body in spiritual awakening. And when I talk about the body's role, what I essentially mean is our relationship towards the body and how that changes as we become accustomed to a spiritual dimension of existence and the spiritual dimension to ourselves. There are lots of different ways that we can fall off course, essentially, in the way that we relate to the body. So it could be that you have a spontaneous spiritual awakening. And until that point, you've went down the classic route that most of us do, which is to identify with the ego body. That is to mistaken the essence of who you are as the thoughts and the self-image that you have and the physical structure of your body. In realizing this, in awakening into the truth of who you are, the, the divine essence of who you are, it can be a case that we then reassess the relationship that we have with the material, and that includes the material body. I always like to use the middle way, or the idea of equanimity, to provide balance in pretty much every spiritual endeavor that you make, and the relationship with the body is no different. Generally, when we are born into this world, and when we grow in the material, and we believe that the material is the only dimension that there is, we become attached to the pleasures of the material and the pains of the material. It could be that we indulge in sensory pleasure, or that we just overly identify with our physical form and see that as part of our identity. When we realize that's not who we are, there's a chance that we can go in the extreme other direction. There's a chance that with this realization, we might then begin to almost reject the body. It might be that we feel we want to just transcend the body, that the material is dense and heavy, and that we're looking for something lighter. We're looking to, to feel a sense of freedom um, through elevated consciousness, through altered states of consciousness. In doing so, it's almost like we can view the earthly as, as secondary. We can view the earthly as a kind of unfortunate byproduct of the, the spiritual realm. So as we begin to ascend, as we begin to develop our spiritual senses, we move further and further away from the body. We become really hard on ourselves if we ever indulge in sensory pleasure. We don't want to become attached. We're really conscious of this. And as a result, it's almost like the body becomes a, a kind of um, just a vehicle, you know, and nothing more than that. And as a result, it can be that the idea and the, the, the practice of transcendence becomes a way of escaping the material. It becomes a way of disconnecting from the body. There's a particular risk with this because most people discover the spiritual path through some form of suffering or some crisis. As a result, it might be that someone is used to looking to transcend the mundane through the, the usual routes, through numbing the body, through escaping, uh, through taking drugs, through distraction, um, through overeating, through essentially abusing the senses in, in one way or another. Awakening into the spiritual can be another kind of portal into that, that type of transcendence that neglects the body. And you will see a lot of spiritual teachers talk about um, the importance of not mistaking yourself for the body. The key to the spiritual path is to balance embodiment with spiritual awakening or attainment or a growth in consciousness. You can almost picture it like on one level, the more that you develop spiritually, the lighter you become. And you kind of float upwards, right? You're almost um, just moving towards the clouds as you become lighter and lighter. Now you need some form of counterweight. You need a sense of grounding in order to keep you tethered, right? In order to keep you grounded. The body is that anchor to the earthly. And remember, the earthly is divine. It's not that there's a, a divine realm. 
behind everything and everything else is redundant. The earthly is a product of manifestation. And if the source of that manifestation is divine, is the universal oneness from which all material uh, manifests, that in itself is a product of the divine. So it's not something that we want to really strip um, the aliveness from or to reject. But if we become off balance, it can be that we crave a form of transcendence. It can be that we crave to move away from the material. It might be that we feel the material realm, the day-to-day, -day, the societal structures, our life generally is too painful. So we then turn to meditation or other forms of spiritual practice to escape. The goal with a spiritual practice is to both embody and to transcend equally. What we want to do is to bring in the light of awareness, to channel the different levels of consciousness that are available to us into the material, not to dismiss the material. The body is divine, the body is sacred, and the more that you can view that without mistaking it for who you are, but appreciating it for what it is and what it does for you, then you'll find that not only are you able to experience the most profound states of higher consciousness, you become deeply embodied and alive in the physical. There's a big difference between embodiment and attachment. To, to the earthly, to pleasure, to the material. Attachment is when we really cling on to that as our identity. It's very much ego-based. We're unaware of the true nature of things. When we're really embodied, we're completely connected to all the different sensations and flows of energy um, and emotions and everything that we feel physically. As these levels of awareness, as these kind of domains get lighter and lighter, you know, the physical body being the most dense, the emotional body being lighter, thought being lighter than that, etc, etc. So it can be easy with a spiritual practice to overlook the genius and the intelligence and the wisdom of the body. We can almost neglect the body in favour of looking in a different direction and looking for spiritual attainment. Throughout the process of awakening, the body itself does go through profound changes it's almost as, as if you adjust to being able to handle uh, more intense forms of cosmic energy. A Kundalini awakening, for example, is a real shift and an awakening of energetic proportions, right? And the central nervous system has to change and update. In the East, in certain traditions, there are gurus who refuse to provide certain levels of insight to people who haven't at first stabilized themselves in different levels of consciousness. Because if you're exposed to feelings of um, oneness and the sheer force and magnitude of transcending the self, that can be a lot energetically on the body. It can be a lot for the physical vessel to process that difference and that change. So the idea with the, the spiritual path is to strengthen the body, to see the body as sacred and to use it as a vessel as a vessel to um, provide us with the opportunity to develop in consciousness while still being very much grounded and connected to the earthly. The transition is bumpy. If we go from being fully connected to the body, as our consciousness expands, we might move more in the other direction and then look towards the spiritual and feel a little bit disconnected. I've been through this process where I've, I first, going through an awakening, almost became more disconnected from my body through experiencing ego death. Um, and almost at times feeling like my consciousness was floating outside of my body. You know, it can then be that you become, well, it's, it's ironic because you can become attached to these um, more transcendent states of being. So the key is to really tune in to the aliveness of the body. Know that it's not who you are. Know that it isn't the totality of your being. But as your awareness expands, you can almost feel all of the sensations 
and different experiences of the body within a field of awareness. This is something that you can only experience and you can try this in meditation. If you sit for long enough, occasionally it does feel as if the body disappears completely, where you just completely transcend the physical uh, sensations. But you can also feel very much aware of the sensations within the body, very much grounded in them, at the same time as having an expanded sense of awareness. By really tuning into the body, you're able to fully become who you are. You're able to be a lot more in tune with your intuition, with the guidance systems um, that exist within the body. A lot of the time, the way that we are developing mentally and spiritually is reflected in the physical form. So the body becomes an ally and a real support system in the spiritual path. It goes without saying, and it might be stating the obvious, that when the body's no longer here, you, in this incarnation, are also no longer here. So the goal isn't to completely neglect the body. Who you are is a human and a spiritual being. You know, a spiritual being having a human experience, right? So you want to make the most of the human experience whilst attaining as high a level of consciousness or spiritual awakening as you can. Although a lot of work is done internally in connecting to Atman, connecting to your true nature and ascending in consciousness, the body has a role to play. And it can be that in different situations, the way you treat your body has an impact on your consciousness. I mean, if you just look at, if you take drugs, for example, you drink alcohol, the effect that that has, or if you exercise, and look after yourself, then you will find that you feel a bit lighter. And it can be easier then um, to overcome a sense of sluggishness or unease in the body. So just to recap, the goal is to avoid attachment or avoidance with the physical sensations, not to mistake who we are as the ego body, but equally to view the body with reverence, to see it as a sacred vessel and an ally that will be on your side as you develop spiritually. And in doing so, not only will you be able to have the kind of mystical feelings of oneness or these core cool experiences, you'll generally just feel more present in your environment and you'll feel more connected to the earthly. And the earthly is, without a doubt, incredibly beautiful. Feeling connected to nature and connected to your spirituality at the same time is the definition of wholeness. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please subscribe if you like what you've seen. And don't forget, you can get a free copy of my book, Mindsets for Mindfulness, or you can join the Superpower of Self-Compassion course on Teachable, which is now available for enrollment. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.